For centuries, food gardeners all around the world have been trying to find ways to grow bigger and better vegetables. One of these ways is perhaps the most electrifying of them all, and that's electroculture. Over the past four months, I've been running my own electroculture experiment to see if this way of growing veggies really does have a pulse. And some of you will be shocked by the results. Let's get into it. In case you didn't see the setup video I did with Dave from the Weedy Garden, here is a quick recap of how we designed this electroculture experiment. I'll also leave a link to that video below. But essentially the spark for this experiment was Weedy and I wanted to do a collaboration. So we decided on electroculture because both of us had seen this method online but never tried it and it was fascinating. I mean, you can't deny growing bigger and better vegetables through harnessing the energy around us by using copper wire on stakes and pumping that straight into the garden bed seems like an interesting thing to try. The theory is kind of three phases. The energy goes into the soil, it stimulates microbes which in return releases more nutrients which in turn helps the plants to grow bigger and better and can also repel pests. It's a win-win-win and it's probably more than three phases. So we placed a number of these copper antennas into the garden bed and we planted corn, eggplant and chilies. In a control bed, the same size with the same soil preparations but without the copper antennas, we mirrored the planting in the electroculture bed. Weedy then left here and went back home and set up exactly the same experiment with the same equipment and even the same seedlings from the same batch. Then it was a matter of waiting and seeing which bed grew better than the other, or would they grow the same, or would one of those seedlings or more go crazy and turn into a power plant? I don't know, I had no idea. About 10 days later, the plants in the electroculture bed were growing fine and so were the weeds. In fact, there were hundreds of them. I did wonder if the copper antennas were somehow pulling weed seeds from all around the countryside and bringing them straight to the bed. But then I checked the control bed and found that it was full of weeds as well. So I chalked it up to coincidence. One month after planting, I made some interesting observations. Uh, bloody cockatoos, look at that. Then they don't eat it, they just damaged it. That's all they've done. They've just deliberately cut this off to damage the plant. I might as well give an update. I think it's been about a month since we planted these in the electro experiment. And the corn, well, most of it's going pretty well, except for that one that got gnawed off. The eggplant stung to flower. Good size, they look healthy. The chilies are flowering as well. Good size as well, the good growth. Very good for just four or five weeks. Absolutely excellent. Let's go have a look at the non-electro. And we'll see a comparison at this stage on how they are going. No cockatoo damage on this bed, which is good. The corn is probably slightly bigger by about a foot. So it's starting to flower on top. Good strong growth. Yeah, looks looks excellent. Eggplant, uh, there's a pest. That's a 26 spotted lady beetle that's another one they eat plants like eggplant and potatoes so it's not just the lady beetle it's the bug or it's the larva that it lays that will eat 
your plants faster than what those lady beetles can do. So I'll have to watch that. I don't know if that's a sign that the pests are on to these but not on the other ones. Now there's some grasshoppers here as well. Another one. So the grasshoppers are into it too. Interesting. Chili's going okay. Um, Chili's not as good as the other bed for whatever reason. Hmm. So it seemed like the electroculture bed was growing a little bit better than the control bed at the time, except for the cockatoos. Just over two months or nine weeks after planting, I harvested the corn first from the electroculture bed and obviously the stalk that was savaged by the cockatoo never grew back. Also, I noticed signs of pest attack from corn grub, which went against the narrative of keeping the nasties away. Those with a keen eye would see that the corn kernels were a tad overripe, which was solely my fault for picking the corn late. In the control bed, the corn grew at roughly the same rate, but had more pest damage than the corn in the electroculture bed. At the end of the day, corn on the cob might have been out of the question, but blended all together, the corn made a tasty and nourishing dinner of creamed corn served with fresh homemade bread. Over the next month, the eggplants and especially the chilies in both garden beds grew well. You could say that they powered on and kept charging non-stop. But anyway, we're now in the current day, so let's just have a look at what's happening now and compare both the beds and I'll do a bit of a summary. The corn is long gone and yeah, there's a few tomatoes coming up here, a little bit of weed that I've got to weed out. And also we're coming to the end of the season for the eggplant and the chilies, but the chilies are really holding on beautifully. They've had several crops of chilies. They're actually a very good flavored chili. Yeah, it's looking very healthy even though we're coming into winter and the season is dying back. We're gonna get plenty more red and green chilies off these plants. There's also a spaghetti squash that has come up from the other bed over there and has grown through. I've just left that go. I don't think it's hurting anything, but it's also starting to die back now anyway. All right, let's go around and check the mirror bed and see what the control bed looks like compared to what you've just seen here. Don't worry about this turmeric growing here on the side that's coming up between the beds that's got nothing to do with the experiment it's nice though look i don't know about you but to me i think that the eggplant here is growing a little bit more healthier it's a bit bigger and the chili plants are a bit bigger as well it's not by a lot and i'm going to put that down to the possibility that these plants might have got a little bit more food than the other ones. Even though we prepared the beds exactly the same, you can never tell if the soil, unless you really test it, has natively got a few more nutrients in it than the other bed. This is an anecdotal type experiment, but it is fun. I'm definitely gonna make a few things out of these chilies. You just can't have a beautiful big crop like this and not preserve it in some ways. I'm going to dehydrate them, freeze dry them, make a powdered chili. I'm also going to make a chili jam and maybe even a chili sauce, but we'll see how we go. Before I give my conclusion, I should say that during the first video, we gave the opportunity of people watching that they could email us, me and Weedy, and let us know if they're into electroculture and if they've had any success in the past. And one, well, several people emailed and spruiked the benefits of electroculture, just like this. But we had one email from an Italian chap who reckons that, with respect, our experiment was pretty amateurish. And he swears by electroculture and recommended that you need to get any good results and to grow bigger veggies, you actually need bigger and better equipment than this. Even going as far as hooking up batteries and electrical system to the beds to make the charge even bigger and then that would really stimulate growth. Honestly, 
amping up the power sounds a bit dangerous to me. I mean, stand back when you're watering. And especially if you've got a steel watering can like me. But seriously, I'm not gonna get a cheap buzz out of poo-pooing electric culture because I know there's plenty of gardeners out there that do use this method and swear by it. And I haven't done enough testing to completely rule out whether or not it works properly or not. So if you wanna practice electric culture, more power to you, but I will be sticking with my basic raised bed gardening and proven growing techniques. Unless I have some light bulb moment, I won't be changing anything. And if I'm really going to be frank about it, gardening should be easy. It shouldn't be difficult. There shouldn't be too much complicated things involved. Otherwise people lose interest at a basic level and they just don't want to get involved in it because there's too much fluffing and fussing and buzzing around to try to get your plants to grow. Go and check out the Weedy Garden video on the same experiment. I know he went down a little bit of a different line. So check that out and see how he went. I'm sure you'll be impressed and it'll, you'll find it interesting as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big powerful thumbs up, share the video around and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Cheers. Bzzz. <sniffs>